Hey cats, Ed Bud here. After my recent half marathon race, I've decided to do some serious number crunching. I want to try and figure out as to which shoe in my arsenal gets the absolute best out of me performance wise. And what did I find? Stay tuned. Hey cats, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, where have you been? Help us out by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell below for notifications if you like running content, because that's what we do here. You can help the channel out a great deal as well by giving this video a thumbs up like and sharing it with your running buddies. Danke schön. So I want to figure out as to which of the running shoes in my arsenal gets the absolute best out of me performance wise. I know that a shoe doesn't just instantly make you faster, but certain shoes seem to work better with me and I want to try and figure out which ones. I've used as many metrics as I can possibly get my hands on to come to these conclusions today. Does any of it matter at all really? I don't know, but it's kind of fun having a look, isn't it? So obviously I've considered the race times that I've got recorded over the last couple of years, the average cadence recorded across the race or time trials or whatever it is. I've also included Strava's estimated effort level as well, along obviously with course elevation. It's a very hilly area around here. I've got a few non-shoe related side metrics as well, including the temperature that day recorded for the race or time trial, the time of the day as well. I remember hearing a story a while back that Arsenal were terrible at midday kickoffs. I think they were just terrible that season anyway. So which shoes have stood out for the high performance efforts that I've done over the last couple of years? There are four shoes in total. So rewind to the Bristol Half Marathon. I utilize the Vaporfly Next Percent 2. That's still my PR over the half marathon distance. Certainly a high cadence recorded there of 177. A high level of effort as well. And right in the threshold heart rate zone. I think it's an 8 mil drop recorded in this shoe. So got to bear that in mind as well. One feature that could diminish the importance of this race was the 15 degree temps. Though I think that would diminish the actual performance overall. But it didn't seem to do that on the day. I think the big takeaway obviously has to be the time here. Did this shoe help me to achieve that time? I'd suggest yes it did. There wasn't a point in the race where I ever thought oh the shoe's really uncomfortable it's not really doing anything for me. Now one thing that does set this shoe apart from some of the others in my collection it's a size 11 and a half UK. Typically I pick up a size 11 UK so I wanted a bit more room here perhaps for racing a marathon. Does that have some bearing? So definitely a touch longer here in the next percent too. You know, I can wear a thicker sock with it. Does that have some sort of bearing on all of this? So I've got to include this one. Best performance over the half marathon distance in a race at least. What about the shoe that had the lowest heart rate and effort level across the half marathon distance? That comes out as the Alpha Fly Next Percent. So I've done a time trial on this model of the shoe, but also a half marathon at Salisbury last year. In both of those performances, this shoe seems to lower the perceived effort level. It's really quite clear. It's a real energy saver, this one, by the looks of it. At the Salisbury Half Marathon, I clocked a time of 1 hour 32.27, but the heart rate was only about 152 overall. So not a massive difference between the time at Salisbury and the time at Bristol. It's only about 40 seconds off the Bristol race PB, but with a much lower heart rate. Cadence in this one exactly the same as the Bristol race. But there are three factors that we do have to consider when we start trying to compare the performance of this and the next percent too. As you can see, temperature exactly the same as per Bristol at 15 degrees centigrade. Though there's much more wind on the Salisbury course that day, and elevation recorded over the two courses is pretty much the same. One big thing that does set this shoe apart, I think, from the next percent is the rate of recovery after the race. I can remember feeling incredible the next day. Legs just felt like they hadn't really done a race whatsoever. Yes, the time duration was a little bit greater. It wasn't quite as low as Bristol, but it was still pretty close. Certainly the legs in a better condition post-race than any other shoe. Perhaps aside from the Prime X from Adidas, though I'm not really sure that's a shoe I'm going to ever race in. There's no getting away from it. I think the Alpha Fly does lower the perceived effort. Even in the time trial I did, the heart rate is about seven to eight beats per minute lower. Same type of pace and effort rating too. Does the lower drop of the shoe matter here? I mean, it's only a four millimeter drop here, but at times it feels almost like a negative drop. It's so squishy here in the heel that it really does start to feel like the shoe's sort of more balanced this way, I suppose. So that's the two classic Nike shoes down that you'd perhaps expect to see in this video. 
What about some of the other models though in my collection? So fastest time that I've actually recorded over the half marathon distance was in a time trial. And it's in a route that I have lots of faith in in terms of accuracy with GPS. So I logged a one hour 30, 54 in the Adios Pro. Remember this shoe? It's been sat here unused for ages. Again, as per the Alpha Fly, we see a lower heart rate here overall. If you compare it up against the Bristol and the Salisbury half marathon heart rate, it's much lower. You could attribute that to the colder conditions on the day, though. I think it was only about one degree C out there. <laughs> it was cold. You had to run quickly or you'd freeze. Again, as per the next percent two, this shoe is in fact a UK 11 and a half. One that I tend to wear with a thicker sock. So is that extra length actually playing a bit of a part here with the best performing shoes? Perhaps it's a little more comfortable, I suppose, over the distance. I mean, I wore that Metaspeed Sky the other day for the Yeovil Half Marathon. That's a UK 10 and a half. It's a little snug, but I never found myself thinking, oh, this shoe's really snug. I can't run quickly or it's hindering me or anything like that. So the drop in this shoe is closer to that of the next percent two. And that time trial was on a route where the elevation was closer actually to the Yeovil Half Marathon. I think it's about 610 foot. So yeah, it's not exactly the same, but it's hardly a flat course. That's easily my most consistent effort over the half marathon distance was in this shoe. So the Adi Zero Adios Pro Original has to be kept in mind for the best performing shoe. For me at least. I really need to clean this shoe. So I'll move down to the lower distances now, the 5 and the 10K. There's a couple of shoes that stick out here. The Martok 10K back in June of 2021 saw my 10K PB. That's 41 minutes and 39 seconds. Again in an Adidas shoe, this time the Adios Pro 2. And again, it's a UK 11 and a half. Are you seeing a trend here? And temperature, 15 degrees C. So yeah, always seems to be about that temperature when I record a pretty decent time, even though I complain constantly that I don't like the hot weather. And that is hot here in the UK, that's warm, pleasant. People say, oh, it's not hot. Well, over here, you know, you get used to the temperature it is. So just bear that in mind when you comment and say, that's not very hot because for us, it's pretty warm. Certainly though, the highest heart rate we've seen in the stats today, I think it was about 160 beats per minute average over the distance. And the effort level there was pretty much half of what I saw on the Bristol Half Marathon. So you'd expect that kind of, despite the fact it's quite a flat course, it was a real tough effort. I did do another 10K time trial on a route where I have some faith with the accuracy of the GPS. Again, that was in the Adi Zero Adios Pro original. Same shoe size as the Adios Pro 2, yet heart rate was quite different. Eight beats per minute lower on average, but 22 seconds faster over the distance. I think it's about 10 degrees C that day. So yeah, it's a bit cooler. Maybe that had an effect, possibly. Way more elevation on that one though, it has to be said to the 5K now. So best results in the 5K that I've seen over the last couple of years have been in the Takumi Sen 8 and the Vaporfly Next Percent 2. Very similar results actually in these two shoes over that distance. You had a heart rate there of about 155 beats per minute average and the effort levels recorded by Strava were pretty much spot on. People that have worn both of those shoes will know the differences here. A much lower drop in the Adidas shoe compared to the Nike. Midsole stack is actually quite a bit lower so you've got a little bit more ground feel I suppose if you want to call it that. Well you're closer to the ground not sure there's much ground feel in any of these super shoes. Both of those efforts had cadence scores much higher than some of the other races, as you probably expect, about 187. So I can safely say that these are two shoes that on the shorter sorties are the superior selections for this shoe savant. Of course, it's not just down to shoes, is it guys? I'd be a fool to think such a thing. You've got diet, you've got sleep, mental preparation, and your mood as well. Sometimes you just, don't feel like it. It's hard to sort of turn that on and off, you know, a race. Sometimes it just doesn't happen for you. I've looked across about 18 different races or time trials here to draw all the results together. So I'm pretty much nailed on that I know which shoes work best for me over specific distances now. It does make for some very interesting comparison and insight. I did have a bit of a hunch that that Adi Zero Adios Pro was one that just seemed to work. Let me know your best performing race footwear or at least you think the ones that are the best performing 
down in the comments. Musical interlude time. I'm really pleased to see that the fantastic album Move It On Over by George Thorogood and the Destroyers is back in a digital form for people to enjoy. Around this period, George Thorogood and the Destroyers were specializing in rock and roll covers and there's some fantastic selections on this album. The title track Move It On Over is a fantastic rendition, chugging guitar riffs there and incessant drums and bass accompany George on his guitar workout. It Wasn't Me though is one of my favourite tracks, a Chuck Berry cover this one. Not particularly well known but once you've heard it a couple of times it's going nowhere. New Hawaiian Boogie as well as one that will help you if you're going on some sort of car journey. It's again got that chugging rock and roll rhythm that will just make the miles drift away. You can't lose with pretty much any George Thorogood and the Destroyers tracks. Go and check it out. This one's called Move It On Over. Okay, time for me to rock and roll out of here. If you enjoyed what you've seen today, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when I roll out those new videos for you. And you can help us out too by giving this video a thumbs up like and also sharing it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.